It feels like Chrome extensions have been around forever. And for good reasons. They are a great way to customize the browser to your needs. Over the past years, we saw a massive increase in interest in Chrome extensions. And the reason for this has been AI. In fact, the number of extensions related to AI doubled in the past two years. 10% of all extensions installed from the Chrome Web Store use AI. But I think we are still at the beginning of this trend. And I think this for two reasons. The first reason is, models get better in advanced tasks, such as complex reasoning or understanding images, audio and video. And the second reason is, Chrome's new built-in AI APIs, which allow you to use Gemini Nano on the client. All this taken together makes it a super exciting time for Chrome extension developers, as Gemini on device and in the cloud unlocks completely new ways to customize and optimize the browsing experiences for users. My name is Sebastian Benz. I work in the Chrome Extensions Developer Relations team at Google. Over the past year, I've been looking into what you can do with AI and Chrome Extensions. And today, I want to show you what's possible if you combine these two. But before we dive into AI, let's talk about how extensions can help you customize the browser and build a better web experience. What I love about Chrome extensions is that they are so easy to implement and distribute. All you need to know is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. If you're a web developer, you're probably already an expert in this. In the best case, you can build and ship an extension without even requiring a server. This can make extensions super simple to implement and maintain. You can build them for yourself or for everyone by distributing them using the Chrome Web Store. Speaking of not requiring a server, this Google I.O. we announced the launch of Chrome's built-in Gemini Nano APIs. These APIs cover use cases from prompting, writing to translating. This means you can now use AI in your extension on the client without requiring an additional server or using a cloud service. And by the way, the built-in prompt API will initially launch exclusively for Chrome extensions. Check out Tom's talk about Chrome's new built-in AI APIs to learn more. You can find the link in the description. Let's take a look at how you can use these APIs in a Chrome extension. My first sample extension is called CalendarMate. It's a simple extension that makes it very easy to create calendar events from text on a website. I want to go to the Google I.O. Connect event in Berlin, and I would like to add the event to my calendar. I select the corresponding text on the Google I.O. website, right-click, and select Create Calendar Event. The extension extracts all relevant event data from the text and prefills a Google Calendar event. Let's take a closer look at how this works. In my extension service worker, which you can think of as a central event handler, I register a new context menu entry called Create Calendar Event. What's nice is you can register context menu actions for specific content types, such as images or text, which is perfect for our use case. Because I can make sure that the context menu entry will only be shown when the user selects text. I can then register a callback for when my extension gets invoked by the user. Then I can directly access the selected text in the event handler and pass it to the built-in prompt API to extract the event data. I'm setting temperature and top K to one to have more predictable results, because I really don't want the model to be creative here. Currently, the API doesn't always return correct JSON, so I have to make a few fixes afterwards, but we are working on making this better. And the final step is to add all event details as parameters to the Google Calendar event creation page URL which we then open in a new tab. And that's all there is to the CalendarMate extension. Phew, this was maybe a bit of a deep dive, but I thought it's good to see how an extension is actually implemented. I really like this extension for three reasons. The first one is, I'm a big fan of integrating AI in a way that is use case driven. By use case driven, I mean that as a user, I do not have to directly interact with the language model by, for example, writing my own prompts, but I can still use AI to solve a specific use case. The second reason is, this is a really great example for how you can use a browser extension to integrate 
an existing product, in this case a calendar, more tightly into the browser to provide an even better experience to your users. The third reason is, I've been able to implement this in a way that avoids sending user data to a server for processing. Calendar events might include personal data and Chrome's built-in APIs process the data locally on the client. Only the event-specific information gets sent to the user's preferred calendar. This is particularly important for extensions because they have potentially access to many privacy-sensitive APIs, such as the browser history, bookmarks, or tabs. CalendarMate is an example for the prompt API for extensions. The API is going to be shipping in Chrome version 138, but I highly recommend you to check out the other task-based AI APIs we've just launched as well. But Chrome's built-in AI APIs will get even better. We just announced that Gemini Nano will also understand audio and images, and you can experiment with these features right now by enabling a flag in Chrome. Check out the link in the description for more details. Here's our next example, AudioScribe. The idea for this extension comes from my colleague Francois. Do you know the problem when you're in a meeting and you receive a voice message in one of your chat apps? And you don't know if it's important or not because you can list, can't listen to it during your meeting? AudioScribe to the rescue. When I click the extension icon, it will open the side panel. And inside the side panel, it will show a transcription of all the voice messages that I receive in the current chat. AudioScribe makes use of two key features available to Chrome extensions, the side panel API and content scripts. The extension side panel API is a great way to show extension specific content beside the main web content. In this case, we are showing the transcribed audio messages. However, in order to show these, we need to be able to detect audio messages in the current page. And this is what content scripts are for. Content scripts allow you to inject JavaScript or CSS into web pages. These are extremely powerful as they allow you to extract content from a web page or even change content on the page. Here we are using content scripts to identify audio elements and to pass their audio source to the prompt API for transcription. Taking a step back, with the previous calendar example, we've seen that extensions can be a great way to more tightly integrate an existing product into the browser. With AudioScribe, we're doing something else. Here we use an extension to improve an already existing product, in this case, web-based chat apps, with our built-in AI. AudioScribe uses the audio understanding capabilities of Gemini Nano. Let's take a look at what's possible with the new image understanding capabilities next. Here's our example, alt text. You know, one thing that I consider really important when posting images on social media is to provide alt text to help visually impaired users. The alt text extension helps with this by proposing alt text for images. You can use it by right-clicking any image on a web page and selecting generate alt text. It will open a pop-up proposing a textual description of the image. Of course, a language model is not perfect for writing alt text, because it might not be aware of relevant context, but still, it can be a great way to get started. It works very similar to our first demo calendar made. This time, I'm registering a content menu action for images, though. I decided to display the generated alt text in a pop-up to give users the opportunity to manually edit the alt text if they don't like it. I've also integrated the option to translate the generated alt text using the new translation API which is another new built-in API in Chrome. Again, a super simple sample, but what I really like about the AudioScribe and alt text examples is that they both demonstrate how you can use the new multimodal Gemini Nano APIs to make the web more accessible to users. Talking about making the web more accessible, this brings me to my final example. So far, all the examples have been really simple. My goal for this was to give you an idea of what's possible in extensions and how to use AI and extensions together. Now let's take a look at a more complex extension. You might have already heard about this one. Project Mariner. The Google DeepMind and Labs teams introduced Project Mariner at the end of last year. It is a research prototype that takes action on your behalf in your browser. The first version 
they launched was implemented as a Chrome extension. Let's give it a try. I'm asking the agent to help me improve our Chrome extensions documentation by adding more code samples. Go to the Chrome extensions reference documentation and create a list of all Chrome extension APIs that don't have a code example. Watch how the agent will come up with a plan on how to approach this problem. It uses Google search to find the Chrome extensions reference documentation. It will pick the most fitting search result and start looking for our API docs. It will go through all the APIs listed in the sidebar and open the respective documentation page. On an API page, it will do a visual search for code snippets and collect all pages that don't have a code sample. Awesome, isn't it? But how does this work? First of all, Project Mariner also uses the extension side panel API to display what the agent is currently doing. When performing a task, the agent needs to know which actions it can perform on a website. The agent takes a screenshot of the page and uses the DOM to identify the position of possible actions on the current page. For example, clicking the link to the alarms API page would be such a possible action. The screenshot with the annotated actions is then sent to a server that uses Gemini to decide what the next step should be to fulfill the user's task. Gemini will decide on an action to take, for example, click a button and explain why it thinks that this is the next best step. The server then sends the next action to perform, together with the explanation why back to the Chrome extensions. The Chrome extension then performs the action on the page, observes the new state and sends it back to the server to ask what it should do next. And this goes on until the task is completed. One interesting question from an extension de developer point of view is, how does the agent interact with web pages? For example, how does it take screenshots of the page, analyze the DOM and perform actions on a page, such as clicking an element or filling out a form? In particular, the latter can be quite challenging. The good thing is there's already a tool available that can do all these things, Puppeteer. Puppeteer provides a high-level API to control Chrome via the Chrome DevTools protocol. And you can use Puppeteer from a Chrome extension. This is a very powerful way to implement a browser agent as it allows you to interact with a web page in the same way a user can. This has been a very simplified overview on how Project Mariner works, but I think it's a fantastic demonstration for what's possible with Chrome extensions. Using Project Mariner feels for me like getting a glimpse into the future. And this has been possible by combining powerful extension APIs and the latest Gemini models. I'm personally really excited to see where this will lead to. The best thing about all the things I've talked about today is all these APIs are available to you as developers. Check out our extension documentation and our latest Gemini APIs. If you have questions around extensions, join our extensions developer mailing list. All the samples mentioned in this video are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and happy coding.